Tesla is worth more than Volkswagen, Toyota, and Honda combined. Welcome back, dear friends. This is Armin Haryan from TorqueNews.com. If you are here for the first time, please subscribe to our channel, join our community, and ring the bell so you may be notified when I upload our next Tesla or electric vehicle story. Friends, Tesla officially has a higher valuation than Toyota, Volkswagen, and Honda combined thanks to a significant surge in the electric automaker stock price over the past week. Toyota, Volkswagen and Honda currently sit at the second, third and fourth most valuable automakers in the world, respectively. However, while the three companies are among the largest car companies in the world, their valuation combined has fallen behind that of Tesla's which has gained nearly $400 in value in just one week. On July 6th, the company's stock closed at $1,371. At the time of writing, Tesla stock was trading at $1,732.61. Tesla's market cap currently sits at $324.93 billion. 324.93 billion while toyota is 176 billion volkswagen is 80 billion and honda is 45 billion or they are worth um, together 302.88 billion combined tesla has enjoyed a surge in value this year of over 220 percent so far providing exponential gains to its investors this fact is especially impressive considering the company has experienced closure at both of its vehicle production facilities in fremont california and shanghai china due to this virus the stock's value, Tesla's value, has inflated primarily due to Tesla's technological developments, improvements in battery capabilities, production efficiencies, and delivery figures that have managed to outperform Wall Street estimates. Tesla's valuation goes f past its stance as an automaker. The company is involved in sustainable energy generation and storage, and its surge as a company focused on the longevity of the earth and freeing its citizens from the dependence of deadly fossil fuels. Tesla has been a leader in transitioning the massive worldwide automotive industry to a sustainable electric-based sector that is both fun and great for the environment. After the Model 3 was released in 2017, Tesla was officially recognized as a mass-market car company that offered premium, sustainable vehicles that most families could afford to purchase. Now that the company has two vehicles that fit the price range of most families, Tesla has managed to extend its reach to more than just the wealthy and well-off. This scenario was detailed in Elon Musk's master plan and it has all come to fruition. The future also looks brighter for Tesla. On recent episode on CNBC's Squawk Box, uh, Oppenheimer analyst Colin Roche stated that Tesla is showing evidence of a 50 to 70 percent upside within the next four to five years. Based on Tesla's significant advantages in electric transportation thanks to automotive technology and battery developments, Rush believes the company's valuation will continue to grow by 2025. Tesla will detail the quarter two 2020 results in an earnings call on July 22nd. With Tesla shares breaking $1,600 per share on Monday's pre-market, Tesla's market cap is poised to hit the 300 billion mark. At the same time, the recent surge in Tesla stock meant that short sellers have amassed almost 220 billion against the company. Tesla stock was up 6% on Monday today pre-market amidst recent announcements from Elon Musk regarding the Model Y crossover which was recently given a price reduction which I reported uh, in my last report. Together with this, Musk also announced that the vehicle, the Tesla Model Y electric crossover, the vehicle's 230 mile range variant, the standard range railroad drive, will no longer be made. 
Instead, the company will be focusing on ramping the long-range rail-wheel drive version, which will have a range that's far above 300 miles per, change, uh, per charge. Friends, apart from this, sentiments are also quite positive surrounding the electric car maker, especially following the release of its better-than-expected second-quarter vehicle delivery and production numbers. Tesla delivered over 90,000 vehicles in the second quarter, despite its main U.S. plant being uh, offline for nearly seven weeks due to the virus. The figures beat Wall Street's expectations, which were hovering around 74,000 deliveries for the second quarter, but like I said, Tesla delivered about 90,000 vehicles. In fact, the general automotive industry situation was not that good. Things at the general automotive legacy uh, situations were like 50% down. So Tesla did much, much better than the other elect uh, than the other legacy car makers. So the figures bet Wall Street's expectations, which were hovering around 74,000 deliveries from the second quarter. Tesla's results were particularly impressive considering the U.S. auto sales saw an overall decline of about 34% during the quarter. Now, with such results, spe um, speculations are abounding that Tesla could very well qualify for the S&P 500, provided that it could post a profit later this month when it releases its quarter to 2020 earnings report. Tesla's S&P 500 requires Actually, I'm sorry, the S&P 500 requires companies to post four profitable quarters in a row, and so far Tesla has posted three. If Tesla could post a profit on its earnings call this July 22nd, the company could enter the S&P 500 as one of the index's largest companies, just below Procter & Gamble and MasterCard. That would place Tesla quite close to the S&P 500's top 10 companies. With Tesla shares poised to continue their rise, Tesla shorts are also poised to place their largest bet to date against the electric car maker. According to data from financial and analytics, uh, and analytics from the S3 partners, short sellers have amassed a near 20 billion position against Tesla stock as of last week. And as stakes continue to climb, the potential for a short squeeze becomes even more notable. The reason behind Tesla's short squeeze is obvious and straightforward. Large mark-to-market losses are forcing out some short sellers as they hit their loss limit thresholds, S3 noted. Friends, Tesla is expected to release its quarter two earnings reports and hold its second quarter earnings uh, uh, call on July 22nd after market close. It is needless to say the days leading up to this date will likely be very interesting. As of this moment, Tesla stock is trading um, at above $1,700 or so. Are you surprised that Tesla's market cap is bigger than Volkswagen, Toyota, and Honda combined? I am not surprised. In 2019, Apple accounted for only about 14% of the global smartphone market. This was last year. So Apple only last year uh, accounted for only 14% of the global smartphone market, and yet its market cap is much, much higher than the market caps of all other smartphone companies combined. So Toyota, Honda, GM, Ford, Volkswagen, Daimler, and BMW represent the legacy car makers, much like the Nokia, Blackberry, Motorola, and Ericsson uh, from 15 years ago. And some of these car makers are making a good effort to transform themselves. How much they will succeed will depend on many factors and competitions. In fact, I invite you to comment and say, what do you think these companies realistically need to say, except just saying, oh, they need to make uh, electric vehicles. What, did, what, do they, what do they need to do realistically to catch up with Tesla? Now, here is another point. Do any of the car makers listed above and below have an electric car comparable in price and range to Tesla? I think not, or at least not yet. Well, until that day arrives, Tesla will continue to have a significant lead in both technology 
and logistics of making competitive electric cars. Here is another point that Tesla needs to do to keep this lead. Tesla needs to hit at the, um, to hit the $80 per kilowatt hour battery price and not one should be able to catch that in the next several years. I'm hoping that in uh, by September uh, uh, during the battery day Tesla will make a big announcement about this uh, battery price parity and hopefully Tesla will announce that it has reached a battery that is below uh, $100 per kilowatt hour. Also, full self-driving FSD is a fair argument, but Tesla can do it, then it can be replicated. It's not like they have any secret sauce there. You could say the computer in the cars is special, but they came out with that a while ago. And you know that, you know that the others are going too much that in one year, they will also have good technology. I mean, other legacy car makers also will have good technology in their cars. It's just that, yes, they can be dominant now. Tesla can be dominant now but tesla won't be dominant for 10 years looking at the same things today tesla has to continue to innovate this is why i believe that tesla will continue advance and come up with better solutions innovating and becoming more efficient i'm really looking forward to the battery day in september 22nd um, with uh, what we see and what tesla displays on the battery day will be in my opinion decisive about how tesla will do in the next two three years well friends Thank you for listening. I want to have, uh, say a disclosure. As many of you know, and I've said this uh, repeatedly, I have no ownership of shares of Tesla. I don't have any shares. I'm not in the stock market and don't plan to initiate any positions within the next 72 hours or even weeks or so. I don't plan to be in the stock market. Friends, you have a wonderful day. This is Armin Haryan from TorqueNews.com. Please subscribe to our channel. Also ring the bell so you may be notified or you don't miss when I upload my next Tesla story. After this, there is a rumor. There is a rumor where Tesla's next second Asian Gigafactory will be. So that story is coming right after this. Look forward to that. Have a blessed day. God bless you. Take good care of each other and uh, your families. See you soon.